Today's episode of Sea Life TV is entitled Run. Let's get started. Hey, welcome to Sea Life TV. On this episode, we're going to be uh, talking about Elisha. Uh, he's dead in this one, but it's a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting scripture and a miracle of God. So this one is entitled Run. So <clears throat> let's start in 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 20 through 21. I'm in the New King James Version. And it says, Then Elisha died, and they buried him, or buried him, however you say it. So Elisha is dead, and they buried him. Time passes. And it goes on to say in this verse, and raiding bands from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was as these men were burying another man, one of their friends or comrades, who knows, that suddenly they saw these Moabites, the raiders, coming towards them. So they threw the, instead of digging the grave, they went ahead and opened the tomb of Elisha and threw it in there threw this dead body of their friend in there. And it says here in, in uh, the scriptures, and when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Oh my goodness. A dead man, Elisha. But when a guy is thrown on his body, his decaying corpse, there is so much power in this prophet's bones that this dead man revives and stood up. But here's the problem. As soon as he wakes up and he's standing in that tomb, he hears his friends going, Raiders! 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 And that's where the first time the phrase, Run, Forrest, run, was used. Maybe. I don't know if his name was Forrest, but makes sense. Anyway, th seriously though, can you imagine waking from the dead? I mean, obviously you can't. You'd have to just try to. Finding yourself standing in a tomb on top of decaying bones of a dead man, and then your friends are yelling that a raiding party is headed your way. So you might be dead again very soon. So yes, indeed. Run, Forrest, Run! I mean, the Bible is full of these amazing stories. Elisha was a prophet in the Old Testament. And these prophets didn't have the Holy Spirit living in them by faith in Christ Jesus. But just look at the stunning power and authority of this man who even after he was dead, life radiated from him, from his very bones. The enemy has stolen from us the faith-filled expectation of power and authority that comes from having God's Spirit living on the inside of us. We have heard a lot of diets in our churches of preaching that taught us to be good people and even good citizens, all good things. But we have not been taught to be Holy Spirit-filled, crazy, dangerous people towards the world's darkness. That's what this was. I mean, in the midst of all this chaos, boom, life is springing forth from a dead man. If we don't know in our own hearts and minds what Christ Jesus fully accomplished and what the gift that he released from God through him after the resurrection is, we will not live with the expectancy for the miraculous. How many of you want to see miracles? I do. I do. I do in my nation, in my family, in our finances, in our healing, in our bodies. Uh, yes, I want to see the miraculous. Look what Paul wrote uh, in Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. And these are iconic verses, so you might be able to quote them along with me. But it says, Now to him, God, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power, that works in us, not according to your power, not according to my power, not according to the power of the government, not according to the power of your muscles, not according to the power of your intellect and your earning, 
not according to the power of medicine, but according to the power that works in us, the Holy Spirit power. To him, to God be glory in the church, and that's by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And what about Jesus himself? In Acts 10, 38, we read how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Let me tell you something. Healing is the destruction of oppression. Oppression, sickness is oppression. Sickness is oppression. Sickness is oppression. Debt is oppression. Lack is oppression. Fear is oppression from Satan. And the power of God that was on Jesus, he went around healing all who were sick and oppressed of the devil. I got news from for you. If you don't understand that it is sickness is only here and death is only here because of Adam's sin. Well, we've done something to deserve it. You know, you may smoke or drink and you've ruined your health or maybe you eat bad. Okay, look, all those are things, but I got news for you. If the enemy can lick, make you look right there instead of all the way back and cut it off at the root, he can keep pulling this on you. He can keep pulling this stuff that you're at fault, you're at fault, you're at fault. Well, I'm not at fault for that sin. I'm not at fault for causing death and sickness to come into the world. I didn't do that. But because I'm of that guy's seed in, in my flesh, human, that's part of my DNA now. That's part of who I am. But God came and sent us someone else to change that. So we don't have to be that way anymore. Sickness and disease don't have to be our, our fear. So let's go on. Jesus was filled with power, holy ghost power. He has this kind of power, as is written in Romans chapter 8, verses 2, and then verses 31 and 32. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. When you've received Jesus Christ into your heart by faith and believing that he is the Son of God, that he is the Messiah, the Christ, that he is risen, that God raised him from the dead, and that his blood was shed for you, his body was ripped apart for your healing, for your provision. Everything that Peter said uh, in, in chapter uh, 2, or cha uh, 2 Peter 2, everything that pertains to life and godliness, God has God has provided everything. He's given us exceeding great and precious promises, it says. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Let's go on to verses 31 and 32. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, then who can be against us? Who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also give us Freely all things. You remember in chapter six of Matthews, and we're hearing about, uh, don't worry about this stuff, don't worry about that stuff, don't worry about this stuff. But Jesus says these words, your heavenly father knows you need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will, all these things will be added to you. Guess what that righteousness, righteousness is? It's not your deeds. It's not your good works. It's not your living by the law and being a model citizen. It's not by your whatever. It is by faith in Christ Jesus. Now, if you go to, what is it? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, all the way to the bottom. I believe it's chapter 1. Yeah, all the way to the bottom of that first chapter. And it tells us that Jesus Christ was made to be wisdom from God for us and redemption, and righteousness, and justification. Jesus Christ was made that for us. That's the, the righteousness that, that Jesus was talking about in chapter 6 of Matthews when he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's his righteousness. Jesus Christ, 
Jesus Christ. All right, let's go on. Galatians 3, 5, and 9 in the New King James Version. Therefore, he who supplies the Holy Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, Preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Man, I pray for us all to have a revival of the hope and expectancy that comes from the Spirit of God living inside us. Rivers of living water flowing from us with healing and deliverance from God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Acts chapter 5, verse 14 and 16 says, And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented, tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Peter, a man, a man, just like Elisha, Elisha, the dead man, we read about the life and healing that were coming from his bones. Well, here's another man, Peter, a human, dead in Christ Jesus. The cross is done. This is after the cross in the book of Acts, and he's walking down the road and people putting or trying to get put the sick people in his shadow so just the shadow passing by would heal them. That's like throwing, throwing them on dead bones of Elisha. And God honored it. It wasn't Peter's power. It wasn't that Peter was so holy. Have you read his history? It was that the Holy Spirit that was in him, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, caused him to walk through these crowds and the shadow of another dead man, a dead man in Christ, healed people. The spirit of life boom up from him. This is the same power that is living inside of you and me right now. The same Holy Ghost power that is working in us right now. Let's unleash that power on an unsuspecting world in the name of Jesus. Jesus was contagious. Leprosy could not bring contagion to him. He touched the leper and the leper received the contagion of healing from Christ Jesus. Now, that's who's, that's who's we are. In Christ, we have faith. In Christ, we live. We are in him. We are one with him. The same spirit that was in Christ Jesus lives in us today by faith in his resurrection. He's forgiven our sins. He's redeemed us. He's brought us righteousness and redemption and justification and, 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 and God's grace. So if he was contagious and not the leper, imagine what we could be. We see that in Peter. We see that with Elisha. Life is contagious in us. Don't let the devil convince you that you have no power. It is not your power. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that works in you both to do and to, to do these good things. I pray today, I want to pray for all of you today and for all of us today. We've been in a time, especially the last couple of years, when sickness and death is rampant uh, among us. And so many of my friends have been affected by this, their families and or loved ones or friends they know very closely, sick and dying of this or that, who knows what it is. Nowadays, it's hard to tell, but this is a, a time, a tragic time. But praise God for the hope of Jesus Christ. Death, where's your sting? Grave, where's your victory? They step from this room there where we see them into the other side of the same room where God just sees them. He saw them both there and here. We don't see them for now, but your loved ones, your friends, they are in 
your future. They are in our future with God in heaven right now beside the throne. He, they are with him. And they're not sad to be gone. And they're not hurting and missing you because they know they're going to see you soon. So I want to encourage you and I want to pray for you because that rips apart our hearts. It, it, it just wears on us and it just kind of beats us up. And we're saying, Father, why? And you're going, I don't know why. I can't, I can't tell you. All I know is this. God does want us healed. God does want us whole. But even if we don't see it, we got somewhere to go because of the blood of Christ Jesus. So I want to pray for you today. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every man, woman, boy, and child that gets a chance to listen here. And even if they don't, they don't listen, I'm still praying for them. I pray that you heal them by the stripes of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I pray for their hearts that are broken, for their spirits that are just being battered in this time with the lies, the manipulations, and the enemy's accusations, and every other stupid thing that goes on, the fear that abounds. Father, your perfect love, your love for us, that in while we were still dead in our trespasses and sin, you sent your son. You sent your son. You loved us. And it's that perfect love, knowing that you love us perfectly. You know everything we think. You know everything we've ever done or ever will, and you forgave it at the cross. When we come to you and confess, I'm a sinner. I need Christ Jesus. But today... We are saints of the Most High God. We are born again. And this life that was in uh, Elisha, this life that was in Peter, this life that emanated from Christ is living inside of us. So I pray that as you walk through grocery stores, as you walk through uh, department stores, as you walk through your neighborhood or your house, as you walk through your family or drive through places or go past hospitals, that the spirit of the living God will emanate, this spirit of life emanate from you and from your family, that they will just, people will be getting healed and people will be getting saved and people will be doing uh, just amazing deliverances. God is the God of deliverance. Father, thank you for these deliverances. Thank you that in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is way, 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 way more not dynamic than the spirit of death. And praise God. We are in Christ by faith in Jesus. If you're not, give yourself to him today. Tell him that you are uh, a sinner. You need Christ. You want your sins forgiven. And ask him, ask Jesus to come into your heart. Believe uh, in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and declare with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe it and speak it. Confess and God has saved you. Now I pray for the Holy Spirit to fill your hearts and minds, to comfort your hearts, to comfort your souls and minds, to see, to give you wisdom and direction and revelation. I pray for these things today. And I, I, I will finish with this, but his word out of Jeremiah chapter nine, uh, chapter 20, verse nine, but his word, Jeremiah speaking, but God's word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. It was shut up in the bones of Elijah as well and in the bones of Peter. And it's shut up in your bones if you're in Christ Jesus. He says, I was weary of holding it back and I could not. Which brings me back to my Pentecostal days. Now I understand why the people ran around in the service, ran around the church excited, running all over the place. So maybe we should run, Daryl. Run!